Hey guys, Steph here. I figured with this vlog, I'm going to respond to a few comments that uh, were sent to me. So I'm on the comments tab here in my, uh, I don't know what you call this, my video manager, or my creator studio, excuse me. So uh, we'll, stop, we'll start at the top, we'll work our way down. Creepy mug, that will make for a fun coffee break from uh, Tiffany. Yeah, this is the mug she's talking about. I bought this mug because... Uh, it's kind of a strange mug, but I'm using it for my Python course as a, as a silly prop. So anyway, so there you go, the mug. Next comment, Mike from Texas. I'm just going to paraphrase. I'm 45 years old. I want to change my career to tech world. He's been learning how to code, uh, but it's all very foreign to him because ah, you're taking the wrong course. Do my course. It'll be very easy to understand from the beginning. Then you can do any other course. That's the key. So many of these code courses that are out there are not designed by teachers. And that's a huge issue because teaching is a skill and it's a talent. And a teacher does two things. First of all, a teacher breaks down seemingly complex subjects like coding, like programming and so forth. And the other thing that a teacher does is that they're able to pinpoint the important aspects of a particular subject. Because with coding, for example, there's so much to learn. There's so much out there. But the reality is that as a developer, you just need to know some of the key concepts, key techniques. I don't know what the percentage is, maybe 20%, maybe, maybe 10%, something like that, of, uh, of a coding language's uh, you know, the totality, you take the totality of Java, for instance, you don't need to know more than 10% of it to really become practical and capable in Java, so same thing with JavaScript and Python, and PHP and so forth. You know, some might argue 25%, who knows? Anyway, but you get the idea. When you are learning how to code or learning any subject, the teacher has to be able to pick out the important aspects and present those to you in the right order so that you understand so things make sense. And the problem that I see so many code courses out there they uh, have popped up recently in the last several years is because a lot of these people have never taught before. It's pretty clear. So people who are new to coding go there and they're frustrated because it's hard and they're like, oh, and maybe coding is not for me. And it's a shame because the fact that they're having trouble has nothing to do with them. It has all to do with the fact that you got people who are not teachers trying to teach. That's my criticism. Uh, and uh, of course, I am biased, given that I've been teaching you know, for 13, 14 years, well, 14 years. Anyhow, this person is saying they know anatomy, trauma, surgeries, tools, instruments, not, not sure if computers are right for you. Trust me, just keep writing code. Uh, keep iter iterating, basically keep just writing code. You might be writing code blind at first. You might not know exactly what the code means at first, but it will come with time. So don't give up. Uh, people say that Node.js is going to take place, takes PHP's place. Impossible. The reason being is that PHP is the most widely used web development language, the most widely used web development language by a long shot. There are so many small businesses out there whose website is based on PHP, and they're using content management systems like Drupal, Joomla, and by far and away the most important and the most popular is WordPress. These three content management systems collectively power something like 35% of the world's websites, if not more, and they are written in PHP. For that reason alone, PHP is going nowhere, right, right then and there. And the fact of the matter is PHP is so powerful and performant, Node has some advantage in terms of asynchronous uh, communications and so forth. Yeah, Node's super fast. But in terms of 99% of websites needs PHP 7, which is, I think we're at 7.1 now, it's so fast. It runs circles around Python and Ruby, and uh, it's just such a great language to get into for web development because of the job prospects, because of WordPress, because of Drupal, because of Joomla, and, and, and there's so many websites that are dependent on PHP, it's not going to replace PHP. That's a, it's kind of a, a joke. I'm not trashing Node. Node's great, but it has its niche, in my opinion. Next question. I'm learning Java Enterprise Edition, J2EE. Should I continue or start another language? 
I'm a huge fan of Java. I did most of my coding uh, when I was a freelancer and working for people as a Java developer. And it's a great language. Just understand, when you're getting into J2EE, you're getting into Enterprise Edition. Enterprise meaning huge corporations, meaning working for an IBM, uh, working for huge businesses like that that rely on Java, and so many do. It's a different beast than working, for example, as a freelancer. In the freelancing world, you're more PHP or you're more maybe some Ruby, maybe uh, some Python. But when it comes to, I'm thinking web development, of course. When it comes to uh, Java Enterprise Edition, understand what that beast is. Now, Java itself is a great language to learn because not only are you doing, you can do web apps with it, you can also do, uh, and Spring is the most popular framework these days in the Java uh, web development. And you also, Android is also, excuse me, Java is also used for Android development. It's not J2WE, but it, it it's Java. So should you continue? Well, if you want to do enterprise, yeah, for sure. If you're not sure, if you just, this is your first language, there's nothing wrong, wrong learning Java, but I always talk about the career. What are your career goals? What are your, your job goals with regards to programming and development? Take a look at my uh, playlist where I talk about careers and code. Right? I have like 20, 30 videos on that, and I go over all these things. Check, check out also my videos. Should you learn, you know, Python, should you learn Java, should you learn PHP, etc. And I get into all these details about language choices relative to career choices. So, but Java is great. Whatever you learn in Java, you can transfer that easily into whatever other language you may find yourself doing. So don't worry about it. Should I keep my name? I asked a few weeks ago or last week or whatever it was, uh, should I change my channel name from Killer PHP, which is based on my old website, to uh, my name. I'm probably just going to change it to my name. I haven't got around to it. This guy, Jeffrey, writes, uh, video starts at four minutes. Yeah, sometimes I get into a bit of a rambling before I start the main subject of the video. I think I'm going to reverse that. I think I'm going to go into the main subject of the video. Then I'll end with my rambling and maybe some scene, scenic scene from uh, somewhere around my where I live here in Montreal. Guy says, waiting for my Python course. It's coming. It's coming. I had to wait for this cup before I could do my Python course. So anyway, no, the Python course is coming soon. I just got caught up in a bunch of work with uh, studio web development and so forth. Finally got a, a new developer on board. He's really good thus far. And we're going to get another one, I think, as well, because some the old guys are moving out. So um, that's pretty much it. That's enough for the mail bag this week. If I have time, I'm going to uh, transfer from my Pixel... Uh, so 4K video that I shot of, this, of a snowstorm that's going on right now in Montreal. I hope you enjoyed the video. Ciao, ciao.